Today we will discuss methods and heuristics for collaborations as well as personal predispositions for making you a better creative collaborator. We begin with the idea of mindsets. You can think of these as concepts to continually be mindful of as you go through the process. The one you probably hear often is iterate, iterate, iterate. Through the iterative process, you want a great outcome, but work through it. By iterating, you find what you like, what you don't like, and what surprises you. The iterative process allows for serendipity as well. I like to think of this as incremental perfectionism. You still want a great product, but you can work towards it. One of my favorite quotes when thinking about this process is, write drunk, edit sober by Hemingway. You can't come up with great ideas and critique them at the same time. First, you come up with your ideas that usually aren't very well formed, and then you nurture those ideas. Part of this process is being able to fail fast. Ed Catmull, the president of Pixar notes, it's better to have train wrecks with miniature trains than with real ones. However, the failures are not just for the sake of failing, they're mechanisms for learning quickly. You apply those lessons to the big train problem. Be visual. Being able to show your idea provides teammates the ability to better conceptualize what you mean and opens dialogue. Be mindful of process. Trust the process. I'm sure you've heard this often. Trust the process, but don't assume the process will fix things. Rather, what it does do is it keeps you moving. It helps you keep momentum, especially when you feel a bit lost. Oftentimes, you can find inspiration through others' work. I'm sure you've all heard this, though. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. If you wait around for the clouds to part and a bolt of lightning to strike you in the brain, you're not going to make an awful lot of work. It can make you think that inspiration is of little value. However, Chuck continues, all the best ideas come out of the process. They come out of the work itself. This is where the power of inspiration lies, in the process. Inspiration does not necessarily come at the beginning. It often comes once you have a sense of where you're headed. It can provide fodder for improving your project by finding both things that you may admire and things you may dislike. Mark Jacobs notes, inspiration can also bound a project, giving it traction by removing particular choices. I conceptualize dispositions as the personal behaviors that team members can engage in to improve collaboration. Norms are the mechanisms for establishing the rules of play. Teams set up initial agreed upon norms and remain mindful of adjusting those norms through the process. The best norms promote continuous scanning of the performance situation and the deployment of work strategies that are well tuned to the special features of the team's task and situation. In reference to that continuous scanning, social sensitivity is critical to paying attention to the needs of your team members. Social sensitivity is mindful attention of each member's emotional and behavioral responses to dynamics in the group. This requires close observation, the need for being self-reflective, and listening deeply to each other. Clarifying questions focus on increasing understanding in the group. They are meant to draw ideas out further. Questions like, can you give me an example? I specifically don't understand this component. Can you explain further? And can I hear more about, or can you say more about? This allows the speaker to elaborate versus creating an environment where she has to defend her ideas. Not all conflict is bad. Conflict in a particular type, amount, and under certain conditions is advantageous. Conflict should focus on improving solutions, not attacking team members. Constructive conflict and productive frictions are in service of improving the project, which benefits the entire team. You can think of this as critique the product, not the person. In terms of the amount of conflict, research shows that problems that are minimally challenging tend to produce mediocre outcomes. It correlates with low levels of task-focused conflict. As the problems become more challenging, the task conflict increases, increasing the level of engagement. However, if the problems are too challenging, engagement decreases again. You can graph this like an upside-down U. As your level of challenge increases, so does your engagement. But if the problem is too difficult, you can become discouraged. So, your sweet spot balances between difficulty and engagement, where task conflict is most productive and where your ideas are most creative. Dissent in a team is critical to pushing ideas forward, and it can stave off premature consensus. Exposure to minority viewpoints causes group members to consider more aspects of a situation, evaluate more alternatives, and re-examine their premises. Research shows that even when the dissenter is wrong, team performance improves. Note, 
participation mediates the responses to dissent. Dissenters must be fully engaged in the process if their dissent is to be taken seriously. Most of the previous concepts rest on the foundation of trust. This trust happens in two spaces, what's called team psychological safety, which is a shared belief that the team is safe for interpersonal risk taking, and collective efficacy, a team's perceived confidence in a particular performance domain. This basically means you trust that your teammates know what they're talking about. One way to help through this process is setting up incremental tasks that help build efficacy. This serves two purposes. The small wins build momentum, think iteration again, and two, it serves as a calibration mechanism for realizing the explicit and tacit skills members have. We're gonna discuss process briefly because we go further into this in person. We're breaking our challenges down into three components identifying the challenge, generating ideas, and then structuring that problem, and then going through that process again. So first, identifying a challenge. One of the critical things to identifying a challenge is collecting the information you need to properly structure your question. There's known unknowns. These are the things you know that you don't know. You can go about collecting information, you know, site-specific information, secondary data. This is you know, internet research. This is research other people have done that you can read upon, and you can conduct interviews. Then you have your unknown unknowns. This is what you don't know that you don't know. And so again, conducting interviews can be excellent. Conducting interviews from experts and from users. Collecting video and collecting images allows you to further pull apart your problem in order to really understand what's the question you wanna ask. Once you've identified the challenge, then we wanna go through the process of generating ideas. One of my favorite ways to do this is through the nominal group technique. The reason I like this is because it allows those that don't normally speak up to be heard. And so you go through the process of brainstorming alone, sharing out as a group, and then continuing the brainstorming as a group. And what you want to do is populate the board with all of your ideas. There are a couple of rules to brainstorming. One conversation at a time. Now, obviously, this is once you're sharing out as a group. Quantity over quality. You want to get as many ideas up there as possible. You want to encourage wild ideas. You want to defer any judgment to begin with, and you want to piggyback off of other people's ideas. So now you want to populate the board with all your ideas. Once you've gone through the brainstorming process, you then organize your post-it notes into themes. This happens organically by looking at the relationships between the different ideas. While you want to organize your ideas, you also need to be able to structure the process. And storyboarding works great for that. It allows you to extend the themes into experiences that only become more relatable, we can help identify what components may be missing in your broader idea. Drawings can be messy, and at times it's best for them to be messy. It allows for the misinterpretation of ideas that can lead to serendipity as well. As you start to cement your ideas, you will want to test them so you can improve on them. You can do this as a team, but you can also invite others to contribute. You can draw this chart on a board, and then feedback is provided via post-it notes. People can place feedback on any of the four quadrants. One, this is the ideas that they like. Two, these are ideas that may be improved upon. This is not a, you know what you should do is. This is for constructive criticism. Three, questions that arise as you see the product. Four, ideas that this brings up for you. Now, this chart is providing you feedback, but as a team, you make the choice on how you incorporate that feedback. Going back to the beginning, iterate, iterate, iterate. So as you finish through this process, you go back to where you think you need to be. Do you need to reframe your question? Reframe the challenge? Do you need to generate more ideas? Do you need to structure your ideas? Parse them down further? These are all decisions you'll be making repeatedly until you're happy with your outcome. I wanna leave you with one little fact about the power of engaging in this process we have referred to as game storming. Robert and Michelle Root Bernstein interviewed 90 MacArthur winners. 57% of those winners engaged in world play creation of alternative worlds. Guess how many undergrads engaged in the practice of world play? 12%. So as you go through the creative collaboration process, keep in mind that you can suspend reality for a bit and return to it once you have created something you find fascinating. We covered a lot of ground and I intentionally broke this series up into three parts to make it easier to revisit the ideas and concepts. Thank you for taking the time and I hope this series helps you collaborate with creatives both in and outside your field.